this is war. <laughs> this is a time to decree and declare. This is the time to rest, to run. So, but I don't want to, like, like, I don't want to take advantage of it in the wrong way. So I hope you know my heart. You know what this reminded me of? Can I share this real quick before I make the declaration? About eight years ago, I had been retired from radio for quite a while. Uh, I'd been retired for, yeah, I think about four or five years. And my husband one day sat me down at the table and he said, uh, what's your greatest gift? And he was challenging me in my time of what seemed like stuck, darkness, where am I going? And I said, I, I don't know. And he said, your, your gift is to pray online. I'm like, oh, great. I'm not on the radio anymore. Back then, catch a hold of this. Back then, there was no Facebook Live. Uh, Instagram was just picking up. But anyway, so Dave challenged me every day to pray. So I got up at 6 a.m. for a good full two years. My daughter, my then 15-year-old daughter would get up with me. We used a platform called Spreecast for our video so people could see us. All we could see of them was a thumbnail and their prayer request. And they showed up every morning, some of them. And then I simulcast on something called Spreaker Web Radio. And what I'm trying to say is I was thinking about that, okay? And I was thinking that was so powerful to say a prayer. That's all I did was pray. I didn't share or anything. I, we just had a list of prayers and I, my daughter was there and she gave the good news verse. So we had a Bible verse. And so I was thinking about all that the other night as I was listening to two different people speak about Hannah and prayer. You remember Hannah wanted a son so bad and for years she would just pray and then she was caught at the temple and the uh, the priest thought she was drunk because she was pouring her heart out. And I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like that in a way is a word for now that people are now, they more than ever are pouring their heart out and praying uh, to be light in the midst of the darkness that's trying to come in. But I always think of this, I, I'm going to admit this and it's almost hard to admit this is I am, meaning you may not misunderstand me, I am hopeful, I am excited. No, the reality of this is real. I don't deny that. I mean, listening to my daughter tell me, you know, 22 years old in the midst of responsibility and her job's closing down, you know, so I'm full aware of all the, the stuff that comes with this. But let me look at it this way. What if this time is a time to rest, to run. What if this time is to even be more, uh, how do I say it, flagrant in declaring who God is? No doom and gloom, Jesus is in the room. What if this is a time to, as a setup, you know, we always hear that word shift. Could this be the shift that's going for the other shift? I believe in the December, I say God has turned the tide based on Psalm 118 in the message. See, I'm getting all excited for you. Even though life could be hard, even though, let's say, hey, are you a mom going crazy because your kids are home from school? I, I'm, I'm here you, I'm with you. But what if this is a time, a setup for us to get revelation, to get treasures from the word because we have more time? What if this is a setup to hear a sermon online that just really breaks down Psalm 91? Bill Johnson did an amazing job this Sunday. What if this is a setup to remind me, I'm going to take communion every day, no matter how I feel, no matter how floppy hair I've got, I'm going to make a declaration today. I'm going to go on Instagram live. I'm going to use what's in my hand to rest, to run, to be ready now to rest. And I'm not going to, this is one thing I think that I was praying into. I, we don't have to tie our emotions, keep a short leash on our emotions to what we hear and feel. Our, our emotions are part of our soul, our mind, will, and emotions. Let me see how I can control my mind, will, and emotions and find that inner unity with my spirit, my spirit being the one leading. So anyway, I'm going to read this declaration over you. 
grab it live or recorded it's a declaration from wendy backland is where i got this from and like i said it's not my declaration because i don't want to like claim anything i'll even tell you who it's from but i want to read this over you and see what the holy spirit has this is a declaration from wendy backland is where i got this from just so you know i am using someone's gift to speak but i believe i've always believed you stay in your own lane so i'm whether the virus was going on or not i'm staying in my own lane i love to talk to you i love to speak declarations over you it's just a little more urgent i'm a little more passionate that's why i'm sorry to admit it but i'm not i'm a little more passionate for you because see i'm looking into this camera but in my mind i'm seeing you that you were meant to be born at this time because you carry a kingdom influencer you shift atmospheres you're supposed to be in that city you're supposed to be in that town you're supposed to be even be laid off because you're everyone in the office oh she was always the one speaking they're gonna may run to you more and maybe not now but maybe later after the white gold is really gone the toilet paper you know they're running to you or not i'm not trying to make light but do you see what i'm saying your consistency has set up the shift where the people before knew you were the real deal. Or maybe now's the time to really rise up with some declarations over yourself and say, hey, I'm the real deal. God told me in the beginning of the year and not knowing all this was going to hit, he just said, dream carrier. I want you to be a dream carrier. I said, well, what's that mean, God? He says, I want you to stand and make declarations and pray and believe for people so can we do a declaration over you Be i'm just going to speak this into the airwaves and i'll go a little slower or I'll, I'll copy and paste it so you can start making declarations of who you really are because i'm full of life i'm drawn to the things that hold life I recognize and reject thoughts that are not full of life and hope. As I said, no drama, no doom. Jesus is in the room, better yet, Jesus is alive in my heart. I recognize and reject thoughts that are not full of life and hope. I feel my body and my emotions vibrating and singing with life. As my husband said the other day, what's greater, faith or fear? I am, my body and my emotions are vibrating and singing with life. You got, this isn't a feeling thing. This is a declaration thing. So come on, stay with me. Life is bubbling up in my emotions, causing joy and expectancy of good things. Yes, good things. I'm ad living now. What the enemy has meant for good is the ultimate shift of good things, of God things, of the kingdom of invading earth, kingdom of heaven being here because I am here and Christ in me is the hope of glory. So I'm ad living off of this. People who are depressed, heavy burdened, or numb to life feel alive and free when I walk in their sphere. Hello, can I repeat that declaration over you? People who are depressed, heavy burdened, or numb to life begin to feel alive and be free when I walk into their sphere. The life in me is more powerful than death and darkness. The life in you is more powerful than death than darkness. The life in you is greater than and than death and darkness because greater is he that is in you than it that's in the world as he is in the world so are you those are like two verses that i've been hanging on <laughs> yeah, i can be resilient because as he is in the world so am i greater is he that is in me I heard the birds and they were singing so loud. And then it says in Matthew 13, I'll take care of the birds. Do you not think I'll take care of you? That was the end of the declarations. Just a short declaration.
and it gets me excited that the life in you is more powerful than death and darkness. The reason I say that is you are meant to be where you are. Do you be you being you is who you are in Christ. Take this time to walk in your true identity. And that's going to be hard because your identity was wrapped up in what you do or you can, Hey, it, you think of it. I go to work. I provide for my family. That's what I do. This is trust. So I'm standing with you for those of you who have just totally been laid off, totally trusting God, feeling around in the darkness. Let us be your dream carriers. Let us speak life. No different, not taking advantage of this time. But, you know, I read that verse. Uh, I wonder if I could find it. You know, it's interesting. Dave spoke on my husband's Dave. He was a guest on our voice camp, and he spoke on Hannah and used her as an example for prayer. It was funny. That night I was listening to a friend of mine from a preaching like years ago. And it was actually a Mother's Day preaching, and I heard the same word, and I, I kid you not, it was almost like it, it was almost like she was speaking back then, three years ago, for today. Here it is. Listen to this. It was, it was uh, Matthew 13, verses 16 through 7. Be blessed, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly, I say to you that Many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Matthew 13, 16 through 17. They're talking about the, 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 the interaction with Jesus. Many people believed and, and waited for that day. What about this? What if this is the day that some prophets of old or the John G. Lakes who got to see it and see the manifestation of God of heaven coming to earth in a greater way. What if this is, what if this is just for you to see what you will see the shift to hear what you will hear, to be able to go on your Instagram and say, Hey, I'm going to just say, fear not. I'm just going to pull a verse out. Come on. Uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to speak life. Yes. I'm going to be responsible Thank you, those of you who are are sharing the facts of it from a Christian perspective. Okay, let's, you know, we got restrictions on us. Let's be responsible. <laughs> but let's go ahead and take this time maybe to slow down and read that book that you've been wanting to read. Maybe to slow down to speak life. Maybe to hear what who needs to be encouraged. Or like I was thinking, not a time for just your casual coffee chats. Well, tell us about your business. But to, to take out our swords and start speaking life and using the word of God. I just believe you are his revivalist. You're meant to be where you are, for where you are, for when you are, for this time. Let's get on the shift. The shift is here. God has turned the tide. To, to be a surfer, to catch that wave, you have to have faith in action. The surfer's waiting for the wave. The action, the faith is he's going to paddle and catch the wave. What wave is God calling you to catch? What is he calling you to speak? He just told me, Teresa, just do what you normally do, but make it, make it more de de declaration-centered. You don't have to get up at 6 a.m. every day unless I tell you to, and I haven't told you to. Stay in your lane. This has got to stay in your lane. So my lane is to be a dream carrier for you. So I hope that helped. I'll, I'll write, I'll type out that declaration. I, I ad-libbed to it, but I'll take out, take, um, put that declaration up from Wendy Backlund, not from me. And let's just join together. Lean in. Who's God calling you to encourage right now? It's like when my daughter called, I'm like, well, come on over. There's food in the house. I mean, your dad can take a potato and make a majesty out of it, you know, something majestic out of it. Dave's the chef in the house. So I believe in you. Don't let the agitation of the fermentation keep you out of the race because your life is meant to be fine wine, not grape juice. Embrace the crush with joy. A grape is crushed because there's something on the outside that has to get inside. Wash your hands.
<laughs> love on some people in your house. And I believe in you. Dave and I are here, committed to speak life into your life.